I have EC3 here with me. We're going to be talking about uh, NWA Hard Times 3. Uh, I'll, I'll start with that. I mean, Tom Latimer, you kind of called him out uh, at, at the last pay-per-view, the, the anniversary show. This, you know, the story started in August. It's going to come to a head in November, even though you guys are having some interaction in between then. But, uh, I mean, is this... Is this the storytelling storytelling you're looking for that, you know, you sort of set off on this journey, so to speak, uh, your narrative? Is this the stuff that, you know, you really want to sink your teeth into? Yeah, this definitely intrigues me. And I think Tom Latimer's, if it's, if it's real, people feel it. If it's real, we as a talent feel it. And I think Tom Latimer's real story is so intriguing because I've known him for such a long time from FCW days and like just him being pegged as being a top guy in any company. Like he is a superstar. He has the look, he has moves, he has work ethic. He has the ability to like a natural charisma about him. I mean, the guy is an A plus first round draft pick star. And the only thing that ever defeated him were his own demons. So, you know, he had a hard time from WWE to impact. Like, he battled himself. And that's been his toughest opponent till you know, me. But I still feel like that now that he's on this path, he's happy in life, he's happy in marriage, he's happy in his career. Happiness can breed complacency. And I think for a guy like Tom Latimer to truly reach his top potential, he has to finally quell every demon he has. And if that takes me to bring them out of him, then that will be the case. Because at this point, I've become more of an idea than just a arrest in my mind. I want to bring people to their best. I want them to control their narrative, to be able to tell their story. Because the real stories of some of these talents that I choose are so much more intriguing that can be written and produced. Like their realities, their realities are what make people feel the emotions and feel something within themselves. And to bring their stories to the forefront in a realistic manner, that is a story to like I'm looking to do. And at the same time, I'm going through hell personally professionally like maybe i'm projecting my own demons and issues onto a guy like that and using him as an escape from myself so i think it's very layered it can go a multitude of directions nwa allows that freedom to kind of let the talent explore their own stories because you know corgan as a leader knows we know our ourselves better than anybody knows us I'm probably getting my dates mixed up, but how much how much did you interact with him when you know he was in Impact? You were, you know, obviously you had your career start there, but uh, how much interaction did you guys actually have? I, in a professional fighting within the ring, I think we barely touched, to be honest. From FCW to an Impact. I feel our very first physical confrontation may be our first. There may have been some throwaway, sh- you know, punches thrown in a battle royal, or like a weird gimmick match at one point. But our interactions are beyond what has been seen on camera. Our reactions are kind of what's been off camera as far as the cordiality, excuse me, the cordiality and a friendship and sort of, you know, a professional brotherhood. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I love about that too, like, yeah, we, the storytelling I'm trying to sink my teeth into is taking things to a level like where the first time, you know, competitors lock up, people are excited to see it because nothing's been thrown away and everything's been protected and pristine. And, you know, we're at a fully even slate and made the best man win. There's no, you know, unnecessary fights backstage or unnecessary hitting him with a chair, things like that, attacking him from behind or having my goons beat him up. Like, get, I mean, I did do that once, don't get me wrong, but I had to make a message. But for us to you know, go to hard times three, completely at even levels, I, I love that, and I love. I wish wrestling could do that more. It's like big people anticipate something. The great rebrand. Uh control your narrative free the narrative felt like a rebrand how is the great rebrand different like obviously it's you know a, a new chapter but 
Yeah, it's something that's kind of caught my interest as of late. How how would you sort of put that in perspective? You know, what control your narrative by idea and presentation through the narrative and what it was going to become got lost, lost in a display of misinformation and unnecessary online banter and a bunch of lying. My vision has been corrupted, and that was because I allowed my vision to be in the hands of, honestly, other people at times. I, too, may have been blinded and corrupted by the fact that with what we had, that maybe something we can expedite the process. I never wanted to be a promotion or the three-letter brand, per se, but then all of a sudden, we kind of were positioned as one due to, like, you know, a streaming television deal and a possibility of live tours and things like that. But it all got lost, yeah. The concept and the idea. So the great rebrand is basically, I don't know if people say the great reset, so I thought it'd be funny to say the great rebrand. But two, at the same time, if my vision initially didn't work, it's my vision and my responsibility and my accountability. And it all lies on me. So what I did, I don't feel was going to work properly. What I'm going to do, the clear vision and the experience behind it, that is in fact the great rebrand. And it might not be so great as far as visual and different concept but just bringing true intent to what i wanted to do and seeing it through the narrative won't go on as planned uh i i mean i the way i took it you said there's like a, a friendly goodbye to killer cross in the third free the narrative coming up any update yes. on any update on when that's coming out uh any more You're details as far as the next project I am glad you asked. Free the Narrative 3 should be released. We're looking to start it as opposed to one long feature, making it episodic and sort of a mini series, which I think gives it a lot more digestibility because it's so different to, you know, the conformed wrestling fan that, that maybe they'll accept it and enjoy it and find something in it. Or if they don't like it, that's cool too. But that should be beginning on Pro Wrestling TV. October 16th, and it should be four to five episodes with some reaction pieces afterwards. And then, uh, yeah, Killer Cross, what we could have done together, you know, could have been amazing. But his journey, I came through the narrative, and they came out exactly where they wanted to be. So taking that power into your own hands and not having to conform and do the exact same you know, show up in a different company to the reaction and then, you know, fall by the wayside and then everything's the same. Being a part of that process, I think, developed them to be who they're supposed to be. And so my ship works. A little bit of news, October, uh, right now it's October 7th. So you said October 16th and then it'll be consecutive weeks? Yes, it'll be consecutive weeks. And then upon the completion, it'll probably be released in its entirety as a full feature. Do you feel like the reception for you? You had uh, Matt Cardona in the first one, Adam Scher, Braun Strowman in the second one. Do you feel like the reception was better, different for those standalone projects versus trying to make the promotion? Like, how do you feel like, you know, reflecting on it? I think uh, presenting something, I think it's tough with attention to detail and attention spans when you're trying something so new, I think throwing it all at once as opposed to easing people in and, you know, guiding them through a process to see if they enjoy it or they don't may have been the only mistake, I think, because by making a full feature, I featured Matt Cardona and myself, maybe fans not familiar with the other people we wanted to develop, maybe didn't catch their interest as much, but I think in a seasonal kind of short increments, it plays very well. Um, both the projects like are completely self-funded, self-created, self-produced, self-music, everything's done in-house by a very small, you know, new team. So very proud of being able to do it and very proud to be able to make it a, a trilogy in a sense to at least see one entire vision all the way through and then take that for what it is. And does it continue in that essence? Does it evolve? Does it live in history as what it was? You know, there's a lot of options from there and see where the see where the fans dictate it and the performers that love being a part of it dictate it. So it's more about getting up the, the performers. Like that's the main focus 
allowing them to be able to create and giving them a platform to do it. So a lot had interest in it. We'll see if Free the Narrative 3 sparks interest or if it rests on its laurels, I'll be very proud of that too because it's doing something nobody's ever done. This one obviously was in production. Uh, I don't know if you can speak to how far into production it was while all these other, you know, contract things were going on. But now that you sort of, I mean, you're ahead if you wanted a, a potential fourth one, like, is that something you're thinking about? Or are you waiting for this one to air and see the reception? As far as a fourth, I think no matter what happens, it has to therefore in itself be part of a great rebrand and change because the original vision was, I mean, I'm EC3. Let's do three. If we can knock one out, nobody wants, you know, you make it a trilogy. I think the reception and, you know, the possibility of it being, it is a, it is a time and, you know, effort it takes a lot and it takes a lot out of us physically it takes a lot of us uh, mentally is it super profitable that would be the question so when it comes down to a business perspective where to take it i would love to do something along the lines of it in a you know 12 part series on a streaming network that is fully invested in behind it just to give a different look and art form to what professional wrestling is that would be my main goal and vision going forward. But then when you bring other people into things, you know, other people have skin in the game and then, you know, visions get not corrupted, but changed or, you know, there's a lot of negotiating going on. Mm-hmm. So to be determined, I would love to continue doing it as long as it provides a service to the talents, provides entertainment to the fans, provides inspiration and storytelling and messaging that is positive and you know, unique characters and people can live vicariously through it. Like if we can keep doing that, then yeah, it's definitely going to be worth it. Yeah. yeah. I, the last time we talked, I think it might have been in between the first and the second one. I don't remember, but you said your vision was, you know, you want this to be a series where it goes. We don't know. I would say you accomplished your goal. Like you're, you're looking at your third one. You had a, a company, like a tour, you know, touring plans you ran some live events so i think it it maybe went beyond what you originally planned so i would say you know it's a it's a success in that respect true yeah and then too with like you know touring aspirations and live events those are still on the table is cyn going to be the quote promotion hosting these like or is it what i really believe it is and that's like a concept and an idea and almost a faction of people who believe in the message and the idea becoming parts of other things. As the tour was progressing, my idea was to really make that a brand for, you know, other independents and high level people and other talents to be able to be seen by the world as we had television behind it. And it was televised, like it's just another platform for people to have their name out there, be recognized, be noticed. And it was bold and ambitious. With Adam going back to the WWE, it wasn't in the cars at the time. It could still play, but I do also think the idea of control your narrative being a a group and a faction plus an idea that can find itself in any promotion, whether it's televised, whether it's independent, whether it's international, and contributing a new, unique brand and interest and draw to those places everybody can win. We'll have to see uh, what the future holds for that beyond, you know, we just, the last time we talked, you promised me some scoops. So I got one control. (laughs) Uh, Free free the narrative three is going to be out in about a week or so. So uh, tune in for that. As you said, consecutive weeks, it's going to be episodic. And then NWA hard times in new Orleans, NWA hard times three uh, next month. So We'll have to see how that plays out. Uh, thanks for your time today. I am glad we got a chance to catch up. Uh, you know, everything worked out, and we'll have to do this again soon. Well, I appreciate it. Don't be a stranger. And two, when I talk about controlling your narrative being an idea that's almost an infection to different promotions and things like that, I think the NWA, their 
ties to nostalgia, yet their future. I think that's why this is perfect matrimony. Um, so I'm excited to see where we go together, where we grow together, and I'm excited to see myself as an NWA champion in the future. That'll be an interesting uh, turn of events, but I'm calling the shot now. So.